Wouldn't it be great if you could walk into a client meeting and you say, you see all these leads? I'm responsible for that. I did this. This is because of the work that I'm doing. You could track where all of those leads are coming from. Don't you think if you did something like that, you'd be able to charge more and you'd keep your clients longer and land bigger clients because you're charging for these outcomes? If you've ever worried about trying to get away from hourly billing or trying to just get away from these low budgets, just sort of implementation only kind of projects into value priced work that's high ticket, long-term clients, recurring revenue, because you're generating leads all the time. This is the ticket for all of that. If you've never tracked your leads before, this video, you might think of it as like the turning point in your business where you're like, I, I can't even believe I wasn't doing that before. And how could I live without it now? That's how I feel about it. And not only that, it's, it's sort of like, ima imagine if you were in some other context. Imagine if you were a personal trainer and you didn't have a scale and somebody hires you and they're like, hey, I want to lose 20 pounds in six months and, and you kind of get this agreement that that's what you're going to do. You start working out together and then there's no scale. It's like, and then you're, so then what do you do? You say, well, do you feel like you're losing weight? Does it seem like I'm the one helping with this? Isn't that what we as web designers do, right? Like the clients will come up to me and say, well, show me what you're doing. And you're like, well, doesn't it feel like you're getting more traffic and more calls? Doesn't it seem like I'm the one responsible for that? Isn't it more now than it was before I was there? And it's, and it's like, it's vague. But if you can track the leads, you can say, look, these actual leads, I can show you in reports that I'm responsible for generating these leads. Plus it begins to open up other types of ways to position your work. You can, you can offer performance guarantees if you want to. You could say, I guarantee you get at least 10 leads per month or you don't have to pay. Or you could say, let me just send you your first five leads for free. So that way you can see that our solution works and then we'll just move into the paid part of the relationship. So like if you wanted to do stuff like that, you could. So all of that revolves around tracking your leads and you can use UTM parameters to do it. It's not technically hard. It's just name value pairs on the end of links so that when people click links to land on your website, you can tell where they came from. So it's not technically challenging. The problem that I had with UTMs for years was that all of the resources, like all of the tutorials and lessons and stuff that I've ever seen about how to do it, it's always in the context of paid ads. And I want to track more than paid ads. I want to track what I post on Facebook and what I post on YouTube. And if I send out an email or if it's a drip campaign, or even if I go somewhere in person and give a presentation and have like a QR code up on the screen after the talk and, and people like scan that and go to pick something up, I want to track that. I want to know what's working and what's not working so I can do more of the good stuff and less of the bad stuff. And I also want to be able to share that with my clients. I want to say, hey, look, I'm responsible for doing all this for you. And so I use UTM parameters for that. But here's where it gets a little tricky. There's five variables that are in the UTM parameter list. So what I've done was I thought about putting together like a video sort of demonstrating all of the details of all of the stuff. And I'm going to do that right now. But I also put together an, an ebook. <laughs> it's called How to Track Leads. And it's like, it's not huge. It's like 12 pages, but it has examples and definitions, like detailed definitions of what each parameter should hold or, or like how to use each parameter in a whole bunch of different contexts. And in fact, you even get like a list of five questions that you can go through, which we're going to go through some right now as well. But like, I figured like if I only did the video, then people would have to like bookmark the video and then watch the video 10,000 times. Like every time you did a campaign, you'd have to somehow find the video and watch it again. Whereas if it was an ebook, you could just download it, hold on to it. And anytime you need to put UTM parameters on a link, you can just pull up the ebook and look at the questions and, and you kind of had this sort of it's just easier to access. So if you go over to lead.blue slash UTM, that'll bounce you over to this page where you can just um, stick in an email address and download the ebook. So um, it's called How to Track Leads, and it'll just email it right to you. So that way you've got it. But let's go into the details right now so we can just sort of see an overview of how it all works so that when you get the book, it all makes sense. So there's five UTM parameters that we want to put in values for. And let's go through all five right now. The first one is the UTM campaign. And I think of the campaign as the thing that I'm offering. So like in ads, you like go into your Google ads campaign and, and, and you know, sell like a campaign or you go into your Facebook ads manager and you set up a campaign. But like, what if it's not an ad? What if it's not a paid ad campaign? What if it's something else? And, and even if you do go into an ad manager and, and have a campaign, what do you call it? Is it some random name or just the date or something like that? I don't like to do it like that. I like to think of the campaign as the thing that I'm offered. Like what, what thing am I giving away? What thing am I promoting? So for example, if I put a UTM link on this video and I want you to go download my How to Track Leads book, the name of the campaign is the How to Track Leads book, like some abbreviation of the title of the book, because that's what, I, you don't have to have the whole title in the, in the UTM parameter, but some abbreviation that reminds you that 
this is the this is the thing that I'm giving away. This is the thing that I'm promoting. But it doesn't have to be an ebook. It could be a webinar. It could be a call calendar. Like I'm I'm driving leads to book calls. So there's all different kinds of types of campaigns that you might run, but the campaign name allows you to say this is the thing I'm promoting, but I might promote it on YouTube and Facebook and Google and in-person events and email. Like I might have a bunch of different sources where I'm promoting the thing, but it's all under the umbrella of the, of the main thing that I want to give to people. So that's the idea behind the campaign. The next one is the UTM source, which is what is the source of the traffic? Where are the leads coming from? And this is where you start naming platforms and stuff. Like you would say, well, these are my leads from YouTube and these are my leads from Facebook and these are my leads from Instagram and these are my leads from my email newsletter. And this is the, these are the leads that I generated from this email trip campaign I was using to nurture, nurture the clients that signed up for this other thing. And, you know, these are the leads I got from when I did this presentation at the, at the BNI group or whatever. <clears throat> you know, maybe you have like a QR code that you have up on a screen and people are like zapping that and they're going to download books and stuff. So that's, those are all the sources. Like wh what place are they coming from? The third UTM parameter is medium. And this one was fuzzy in my mind. Is how, do I, how do I put the right thing in there for the medium? For whatever reason, my mind just didn't grasp on to how to how to extrapolate a value that would apply in all the situations until now, which is what type of thing am I posting online somewhere? So for example, if I was gonna put something on Facebook, I have a variety of options. I could run a Facebook ad, I could do an organic post, I could do like a, a, a reel or whatever. Like I, I could do, a, I could do any, number, any, any number of different types of content. Or if I'm on YouTube, I could do a short, I could do a long-term video, form video, I could do an ad. So it's, it's like the, the kind of thing that I'm creating. That's what I put in there for medium. And then the next one, the fourth one is content, the UTM underscore content. And this is where you name the very specific thing. Like you name the thing that people are interacting with that's getting you the click. So for example, um, if I put a UTM link on this video, the content would be the title of the, some abbreviation of the, con of the title of this video. So I would say, oh, somebody watched this video and clicked the link and went and got the How to Track Leads book. Or if it was, um, like maybe it was, uh, Facebook post, and I would say, well, I would name that, like maybe I'm talking about website analytics or something like that in a Facebook post, and I would, I would give myself a name for that post. So I could say, oh, somebody clicked on the link in that post. If it was an email, what I might do is I might, since the, the email is kind of one thing, there's different pieces of content within the email. It could be like the header image, it could be the title, it could be a, like the button at the bottom. So I would name those things, say, oh, you know, bottom button or header image or call to action banner in the email. So I, I could tell which part of the email got the click. And so that's the, that's the content. So the content is where you think really focused on the, on the specific named thing that got clicked, the thing that's driving the click. And then the last one is the term, the UTM underscore term. And man, this one, medium was, was kind of fuzzy for me. UTM term was really fuzzy as to how do I use that value in a way that's not an ad campaign. Because if it's an ad campaign, it's pretty easy. It's like, well, these are the keywords that I'm targeting in my ads. But if it's something organic or not an ad campaign, I was like, well, what am I supposed to put in the UTM term? And so what I'm doing now, and I really like it, is I use the UTM term to define the thing that I think somebody is interested in based on the, the content that I've created. So for example, if I was to put a post on Facebook about uh, like, maybe I've got a client who's a personal trainer and um, maybe he's talking about his favorite iPhone apps to help you fall asleep. And so I'm talking about sleep. So like in, if, in order for somebody to like interact with that piece of content, they'd have to be interested in improving the, the quality of their sleep. And so I would say the term is sleep. Or maybe I have another one that says, here's my top five favorite uh, gluten-free dessert recipes or something like that, or my low, sh my low sugar desserts or something like that. Well, I would say, well, that's probably more about diet. Like people are interested in diet, take like that. Or if I say, hey, here's um, you know, five exercises you can do from the office without any equipment. You know, if you want to get a little exercise at your lunch break, here's like stuff that you can do at the office without any equipment. So, well, that's probably exercise. So I just think about what category, what, what, uh, what, what field of interest would somebody have to have in order to be interested in, in the content that I created? And so that kind of lets me know what types of personas that I might target. Because if you're working with that personal trainer, you might be surprised to see that like 70% of your leads come from when you talk about sleep quality. That'd be really helpful to know, right? So that's how I use the UTM term. So again, I have this whole ebook. So you can go to lee.blue slash UTM 
And that will bounce you over to my website where you can actually download this, this whole ebook so you can actually hold on to this and do stuff later. But, uh, but also don't forget to subscribe. I got so many videos coming up. I've got um, like what to say if your client immediately asks for price. Um, wh what about conflicts of interest? You know, we talk a lot about niches. Well, what if you have a conflict of interest where you're trying to like work with two people that do the same thing in the same spot? How do you handle stuff like that? Or what if you have writer's block and you're not really even sure what to say on your website? So I've got a whole bunch of ideas coming up. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss those videos. But one last thing before we head out. It's, I don't know, for whatever reason, I've got personal trainers on my mind. But like, if you were a personal trainer and you were offering to help somebody lose 20 pounds in six months, and you said, okay, we got a, a variety of things. You're going to have to do diet, exercise, you know, rest and recovery, so sleep and everything. And then the person said, well, you know what? I'd really like to work with you, but um, I'm not going to change my diet. I'm not going to do the cardio. I just, I just kind of want to do the, the, the bench press stuff. You know, like the, I just want to do the stuff in the gym from time to time. Would you say, okay, let, let me reshuffle the prices and just give you a price for that? It's like, well, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't do that? No, <laughs> you wouldn't do that, right? You would probably tell the person, hey, well, if you're not going to do the diet stuff and you're not going to do the cardio stuff, you're probably not going to lose 20 pounds in six months, right? So this next video will show you how to take that concept and, and, and like show you like how can you respond to clients' objections when they start nitpicking the little items on your proposal without lowering your value, without saying, well, okay, well, let me just do the things that you want. Check out this video. I think that you'll find it to be very eye-opening with regard to how to handle client objections without lowering your value. Awesome. I'll see you there.